Welcome to a short series of videos designed to help you get the very most out of your LinkedIn. My name is Alfie Lambert and I work for a company called Lix, which is all about LinkedIn data. So I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn and I've personally been on the platform for about eight years. I've seen lots of good profiles, I've seen lots of bad profiles and I know what it takes to make your LinkedIn work. This series is going to cover four main topics, profile, networking connections, content and company pages. If you can master those four, you have a real chance of getting the very most out of LinkedIn. Let's get right into your profile. Now, 40 million people use LinkedIn to search for jobs every week and three jobs are found via LinkedIn every single minute. Whether you're using LinkedIn to look for a job or just for networking or just to have a great sort of landing page for your professional profile, you need to make sure that it's polished. That means you need a good image, good headlines, keywords, descriptions, and all of that stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into my LinkedIn, I'm gonna take you through my profile and walk you through all of the different sections and then you can repeat that on your own profile to make sure you're getting the very best you can from your LinkedIn. When you sign into LinkedIn, you're gonna see something like this. This is the LinkedIn feed. It's where you see your connections and sometimes connections of your connections, the information that they've posted, articles, videos, all of that great stuff. It's ready for you to engage with. This is where your content is gonna show up when you post it. Um, if you're already uh, au fait with LinkedIn, then you'll, you'll know all about this. Here's a little snapshot of my profile. We're gonna jump right into my full profile. I'm gonna take you quickly through so that you can see each of the individual sections and how I've laid mine out and the information I've included to make sure that I have an all-star profile. So right away, you're gonna notice that I have on the same outfit that I have on right now in my photo. It's because I took one earlier today. Keep your headshot fresh, make sure it looks like you, uh, make sure that it's not unprofessional so that you're not drinking or smoking or on the beach or at a party. I see this quite a lot and it just doesn't fly. You might think that it makes you look very cool and different, but this is a professional setting. In fact, my tip for this is to wear the clothes that you would wear to a networking event within your industry. So if you're in a, quite a, uh, an industry that would you know, wear black tie or at least a shirt and tie and a buttoned up, shirt to a networking event, then make sure you're wearing something like that because essentially that's what we're using this platform for. I work in startups and tech, so it's a little bit more casual. I can have a, you know, an open shirt with a t-shirt underneath and that's absolutely fine. The cover image here is something that a lot of people neglect. It doesn't have to be an all singing, all dancing advertisement. I've seen some that pack in way too much text. You don't need to sell something here, but just don't waste it. I've used something kind of cool and funny, which, which are the eyes looking at me, saying that, hey, take a look at this guy. Um, I can probably do a little bit better, something like that. You know, I can, I can maybe make use of that space and say something about the company that I work for. Or if you're looking for a job, maybe you could put something about that in that section there. There are loads of great examples of good cover images that I will add in the description of this video. Um, along with the sizes for the profile and the cover image, because you want to make sure that they look good and clean and fresh and not pixelated. Remember, we're thinking about an overall profile looking good. Anything that breaks the pattern, anything that looks bad or out of place is going to instantly put people's backs up and they are not going to enjoy your profile. So keep it clean and keep it looking good. All of this information here is going to be automatically populated from the information you put in further on your profile. So where you work, wherever you studied, your current job title, your number of connections, this stuff will be automatically pulled through. So you don't have to worry too much about what happens here. What I will say, and we'll cover this more when we get to the experience section, is to remember to keep your job titles keyword friendly. So if you want to call yourself a lead gen startup guru, people aren't probably searching for that. So you're going to appear in less searches and you're going to have less connections overall. If you're not too worried about that and your primary concern is being cool and wacky, then go for it. But I tend to find that people don't really like that stuff anyway, but it's up to you. The about section, you can be much more serious than I have here. You can talk about your achievements and what you love to do. If you want to include something cool and wacky that you didn't want to put in your job descriptions about yourself, then feel free to add it in here. I've gone for a very simple three points. I've hit you with an achievement, top 100 growth hackers. I was voted that in part of the Goodman Lantern study. Uh, so that's an achievement. It sets me apart from my peers. Automation expert, that's a little bit more about me as a marketer. And then fantastic hair, it was quite funny and lighthearted and I do have fantastic hair. The next section is featured. This is where you're gonna add media that is really gonna give a little bit of extra flavor to your profile. So I've included an article um, that was written about me by Can Do. 
um, talking about me as a growth hacker and some of my achievements. This is really good. It shows that I have press and that people are interested in what I do. The next along is my Goodman Lantern Top 100 Growth Hackers. Um, and I've just noticed that the image is broken here. So again, this is something that looks off. It doesn't fit with the rest of my profile. So I need to fix that. I need to replace it with something else or I need to speak to Goodman Lantern and, and get them to fix their metadata. So here I've seen a few other things people can do too. You can make a video CV where you talk about yourself. Um, I've seen people uh, explain how to pronounce their names. I've seen people give a little speech on, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to do or whatever they're most interested in. Use this space. This is the part where you can really show off who you are and what you've achieved. I'm going to skip past the dashboard because those are just stats. The activity section is fairly important. So any activity, any engagement that you uh, take part in on the LinkedIn platform is going to show up here. Now in the last few years, LinkedIn has become slightly more like Facebook in the sense that people will share personal and political things on the platform. That didn't used to happen. It happens a lot more now. So before you comment on something potentially controversial, just remember that those comments are going to show up on the activity page here. You don't want to have an argument with someone about their stance on Trump and then a, you know a, a someone offering you a job comes onto your platform and sees that you are uh, saying things that they would find potentially unsavory. So that's just something to consider. We're going to get into the main portion of the profile now, which is experience. So here is where you're going to add your job titles, uh, the amount of time that you've worked there, and most importantly, again, that media. I see lots of people who are filling very dry descriptions of what they do, and then they don't put the media in there to back it up and add a little bit of flavor. So mine obviously shows that my position is the marketing director of Lix. It shows how long that I've been here. I talk a little bit about what the company does. I don't talk so much about what I do in the company, um, but you can change that depending on what you're hoping to get from LinkedIn. I'm not looking to be recruited. Uh, I'm in Lix for the long haul. But if you are looking for a new job, maybe in your previous experience, you can talk about things that you've achieved. So if we look at my next role, uh, I've put this here so that I increased the amount of people at the festival that I was a marketer for by tenfold. Within four years, I struck six figure partnerships with household names. I was featured in every national newspaper. This is a lot about what I did. Um, it's easier when you have a product that people understand. So I was working for a music festival, so I don't really have to explain what a music festival is. I can just explain what I did. Um, you know, you have to tread a balance here. Don't write too much. You know, four or five sentences is, is more than enough. Think about the length of a, a tweet uh, rather than an essay because you don't want to put people off and they're just not going to bother reading it. Make sure that you are honest and accurate in these dates. If you're looking for work, ensure that the dates here match up with the dates on your CV. That's very important because if a recruiter checks both and you're telling fibs, then that's not going to look good for you overall. So be honest, include your media stuff. So, you know, links to blogs that you've written or anything that's been written about the company. So for my festival experience, there is a, an article in a national newspaper and I've put a link to that in there. Okay, so experience, uh, we've pretty much covered that. Make sure that you are honest up front and that you use that media stuff to add a little bit of flavor to your profile um, because it really just helps you stand out from the crowd. There are 720 million people on LinkedIn and counting, so if you want to be the one that stands out, make sure you put a little bit of time into this. After experience comes education. Um, you can include as much or as little as you want. I probably wouldn't go all the way back to your uh, primary or preschool. Um, but you can also include education that is, uh, you know, formal professional uh, education and qualifications rather than just the standard school and university stuff. So if you know if you've completed an extra course or you went to a business school or a night school or something along, uh, you know, along those lines, you can include it there. This information will be pulled through to the top of your profile here, so it will show your most recent role or current role and your highest level of education. Um, if you did anything extra while you were there, extracurricular activities, you can include it if you're part of a society or I ran an event while I was at my university, so I include that on there because it just all goes together to show that I am a great person, that you should hire me and you know whatever it is that you want to achieve from your LinkedIn profile. Skills and endorsements, I don't think skills are that important anymore, but it can be quite a nice thing to you know to trade endorsements with people that you've worked with or people that you know. Um, I don't think that employers or people that you network with look at this too much, but um, I might be wrong. Maybe maybe some people are looking, 
In my experience, it's not that big a deal. But recommendations, however, are more important. So you can get recommendations from people that you've worked with or worked for or have worked for you. It's a really good way of building up a picture of who you are as a person when you are working. It's all well and good saying, hey, I did this job and I was great at it. But if you can get your boss or a colleague or someone that uh, worked for you to say, actually, this person was great and it was a real pleasure to work with them and they're a nice person and whatever, or they're great at achieving goals or they're good at this or that, that is gonna stand, uh, mean a lot more to someone viewing your profile than just you saying it yourself. It's social proof, it's like a testimonial or a, a review on an Amazon product, right? We all wanna see that someone else has enjoyed this product, this product today being me or you on your profile. Um, so I've got two people who worked for me and then two people that I worked for. Um, the great thing about recommendations is they're really easy to get because you can give one and then ask for one in return. So ask for a recommendation, you can follow that button and you can pick someone on your uh, connections list and you can write one for them and say, hey, I've written a recommendation for you, please write one for me. Refrain from using your friends. You don't want this to say, oh, this is my friend and they're a really lovely person. That is not gonna look good, okay? Uh, and also LinkedIn is gonna ask for your connection to this person. So make sure that it is a professional relationship. You can add some accomplishments in here. Uh, again, these are just more sort of media links to things that you've done. So if you speak more than one language, I'm sort of semi-fluent in Spanish, so I include that on there. I did a Google Analytics Academy course with Google. I included that here. Um, I was part of a, a project and I wrote an article about the role in Jubilee, so I've included that. That was on a personal uh, project that I worked on and I wrote an article for a sort of semi-famous publication so I included that there and I included the link to it. If you've got anything like that to add to it, it's much like those extracurricular activities that you would put on your CV. This is all just extra stuff to say, hey, this person is really engaged in what they do. So if you wanna work in a field that is highly competitive, it can be really good here to help you stand out from the crowd once again. So you know, if you know lots of people are going to apply for the law firm you want to work for, um, and you've been writing a blog or you've contributed to a legal magazine or you know something that's gonna make you stand out, make sure you include that stuff here um, because it really is gonna set you apart from the competition. Similarly with interests, I don't think people look at interests too much, but you, know, you can try and make sure that your interests align with your personal brand. Uh, my interests show that I like sportswear and champagne, which is true. Um, and I've got my college that I went to when I was at university and I'm in an e-commerce group. Um, and that really in a nutshell is your profile. Make sure you follow all the steps, make sure you use all the sections. You can always add extra sections from here. Uh, if you want to add in licenses, certifications, different education, volunteer experience, there's so much stuff. You can also add in, as I said earlier, um, other languages. And then once you've got that, perfectly polished all-star profile. All-star is a LinkedIn term. I haven't just called myself all-star. That's what LinkedIn refers to you as. I think it shows it here. Yes, all-star. So it shows that you've got a complete profile. You can also edit your uh, URL and your public profile. So your public profile is what people see when they Google and they find your profile, but they're not a LinkedIn member and they're not connected to you. So it's kind of like, um, Profile, profile on private on Instagram or Facebook or something along those lines. So you can edit what people can see, what's visible and what isn't. I'm happy for people to see whatever, um, but you might want a little bit more privacy. And you can also edit your personalized URL so that it's easy to find you. So I am quite luckily managed to get just Alfie-Lambert. There are other Alfie-Lamberts on LinkedIn. I wish there weren't. I wish that I was the only one. But I got the best URL, so make sure that you go into this section and edit your URL. And that is basically everything you need to have a top quality profile. LinkedIn is gonna suggest most of this stuff to you. You can just follow the steps and do what it says, but make sure that you are providing the very best image of yourself that you can, because again, whether you are networking or job seeking, you need to have a strong polished profile. Okay, catch me in the next video. We're gonna move on to connections and networking.